Good morning, everybody. And you're very welcome to our start of the year school service and the blessing of the school bags. Uh, I hope that everybody has an order of service. Um, now, you'll have noticed in the order of service that page two is missing, which, we, which I only copped on to this morning. But you're not missing anything crucial. Um, uh, we'll, we'll get there without page two. We said it was just such a waste of paper to print them all again. Those of you who are, have been part of the parish for a number of years, are part of the school, will know that on the fourth Sunday of September, we have our start of the year school service. To ask God to bless uh, Buddhistan National School and all connected with it, but also to bless all those who go to other places of learning. And of course, last year we weren't able to have it um, because we weren't allowed to have people in church on that morning. But this is a special, a special day as we ask that God's blessing will be upon our young people and upon the staff and all involved in the school. Now, we have been learning this hymn in school for the last week, and there's five verses to it, but we're not going to say, have them all at one go. So you can sit down, well, no, actually, no, you can't, because there's, uh, there are uh, actions. So the first verse, which is not in your order of service, because that didn't happen in the photocopier, is he's got the whole world in his hands. Remember we were doing this in school on Friday at assembly? So he's got the whole world in his hands. So Charles is going to play, and officially you're not supposed to sing. If you sing quietly into your mask, I'm sure you won't contaminate anybody. Um, so Charles, let's give it a go. First verse, he's got the whole world in his hands, and we'll do the other verses later. if you'd like to kneel or to sit. So first of all, we're going to take some time and to think of the things that we do or say that have hurt other people and we're going to ask God to forgive us. So the response is, we are sorry, Lord. And there's two that are going to come before what you have on page three. God, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to show us how to live, how to love, and how to care for others. There have been many times when we have not bothered about what we do or how we do it or what we say. So for the times that we have been rude or horrible to others, including our moms and dads, our teachers and our friends, let's say together, we are sorry, Lord. For the times we have been unkind or not allowed others to join in our games or our play, we are sorry, Lord. And now we're on to page three. For the times we have not shared our things and have been selfish, we are sorry, Lord. For the times when a little bit of kindness from us would have made a difference and we didn't bother to make an effort and have not cared, we are sorry, Lord. God the Father understands that we are human and we get things wrong. And so when we are really sorry and want to change from getting it wrong to getting it right, God forgives us and helps us to make a fresh start. Thanks be to God. Amen. We now have a thing called the Collect, and that's a prayer that kind of collects together the thoughts of a particular Sunday. And this is the 17th Sunday after Trinity in the church calendar, and this is the Collect for that day. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Teach us to offer ourselves to your service that here we may have your peace and in the world to come may see you face to face through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So now we have the second verse of that hymn. So he's got you and me, brother, in his hands. Okay, off we go. <laughs> Now, 
now Jasmine is going to do our first reading for us and Jasmine you're going to do that up here The Old Testament reading is taken from Psalm 23, verses 1 to 6. God is my shepherd. I don't need anything. He has laid me down in lush fields and leads me to quiet pools of water. He refreshes and strengthens me and leads me in the right direction. Even when the going is tough, I am not afraid because God is with me and his trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. God provides me with what I need, even when I am surrounded by those who don't like me. He blesses me generously. God's goodness and compassion are with me every day and I will be at home in the house of God at the end of my life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jasmine. Well done. So we're now going to have the third verse, which is, he's got you and me, sister. is going to do our New Testament reading for us. The New Testament reading, Luke chapter 13, verses 18 to 20. Then he said, how can I picture God's kingdom for you? What kind of story can I use to help you understand what it is like? It's like a mustard seed that somebody plants in their garden. Although it is a tiny, tiny seed, it grows into a tree big enough that birds can build their nests in it. Or like an acorn that grows into a huge oak tree with, with thick branches. Jesus tried to explain it another way. How can I picture God's kingdom? It's like yeast that a baker works into. Enough dough for three loaves of bread. Yeast is small, but it makes the dough rise and the dough doubles in size. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well done. Thank you, Arabel. So the fourth verse, he's got the little tiny baby in his hands. <laughs> to please be seated. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Now, we were looking at that last reading in it, that there were tiny little mustard seeds that were going to grow into a big, huge tree. And you know, they're so, so small, it's hard to imagine, sorry about the knife, that you're going to grow into a tree. Now, I have an apple with me this morning. Anybody want to have a guess how many pips are in this apple? Yeah, Archie? Shout out loud. Six pips. Any, any increase or decrease on six? Anybody else think there's something different than six pips in the apple? Oh, Sarah, how many? Six as well. Okay, I will cut the apple. Oh, can't see any just yet. If this is a pipless apple, my sermon is shot. <laughs> oh, no, I found a pip. only one pip in the apple. Can you see it in there, the little dark thing in there? What, oops, and fall out. One pip. Sheila Hillis, you gave me these apples. They only have one pip in them. My goodness, that's amazing. Anyway, there's only one pip in this apple, but now the question I want to ask you is, how many apples do you think are in that pip? Now, there's a question, Sarah. Sarah. 
Shout out loud to me. Three. There could be three. Anybody else? Yeah. Lola? Four. Anyone, any increase? Any other takers apart from three or four apples in a pip? Well, I don't think we'll be able to count how many apples are in the pip because if that pip is sown into the ground as a seed, what will happen is, hopefully, that it will grow into a tree. And that tree will produce lots and lots of apples every year. So actually, we have no way of counting how many apples there might be in that pip. There could be hundreds and hundreds, thousands of apples in that pip. And isn't that amazing that out of one tiny little pip in that apple, we could end up with thousands and thousands of apples in a number of years' time. Now, when we start in school, you know, it can be really frustrating. And when Mrs. Lyons is doing sounds with you and you're learning how to make letters and you're learning about numbers and then with, with the letters you're learning to make words, it's very hard sometimes to see that when you're doing that, that you might end up way, way down the line not just being able to read, but actually being able to write a whole novel or a whole book of your own. And when we're in junior infants, we don't really see that we'll be able to do write a book, but we take part and write a book every year. And so it's the little things that we do, like learning our sounds and learning our letters, and then they go into words, and then they go into stories, and it grows and grows, just like the tree, apple tree grows and grows and produces more apples. Or when you're doing your numbers and you're learning things, you, nobody thinks, now those of you who are in fourth class, I think it's fourth class you do long division, when you start doing long division in fourth class, you never think of that when you're in junior infants. When you start by learning to do your numbers and writing your numbers and learning to add and subtract. And then you go on to do multiplication and division. And people use that all through their lives. Even when people are going shopping, particularly if they want to get the voucher used in Dunn stores for 10 euro, you're doing a quick tot on your head as you're doing the shopping. Ask my husband all about it. He's terrified in case he doesn't get a voucher used. So the things that you learn in school, you use in all sorts of ways for the rest of your lives. And some people go on to use maths in their professional life, either as maths teachers or actuaries. So all those things that might seem a bit frustrating at times, they grow on and they go on and grow and you use them in all sorts of ways. Now, other important things that you learn in school is how to be with your friends and how to be good friends, and to be kind, and polite, and to look after people. And that's not just something you need to know in school. It's something that grows and goes on, and will be a part of you for the rest of your lives, and the kind of adults that you will become, and how you will influence other people, and how you make them feel. So just as from that small pip in the apple, there can be thousands of apples, and think of all the apples and the apple tarts and the crumbles and uh, all the things that can be made from apples. We never think of it when we see one pip. In the same way, when we're doing our work in school, it can be very hard to see that it's part of something much, much bigger for our lives. And that's why each of those little things is important. So we're gonna ask God this morning to help us to look after the little things in our lives and to recognize that they can have a big effect on other people. And those can be little things about the words we use or little things like the actions that we do when we're in the classroom or when we're at play in the playground. God uses us to want to us to be the best that we can be and the best that we can be not just for ourselves but for others as well. So I'm going to finish the sermon. I'm going to have a prayer. So hands up over the heads. As they come down past our eyes, we close our eyes. As they come past our lips, we close our lips and we pray. God, we thank you for the steps that we do every day. Steps of learning in school and learning at home and steps in learning how to be the best people that we can be. And so we ask you to help us remember that even though we might find it a bit tiresome at times and a bit frustrating, that those little steps make a huge impact on ourselves and on other people and on our world. So help us to be the best that we can be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. So now we're going to affirm our faith. And this is just saying what we believe in, in terms of our faith. So I'm going to invite you to please stand. Let us declare our faith in God.
We believe in God the Father who gives life and love to his children. We believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. We've got the last verse of that hymn. He's got everybody here in his hands. If you'd like to sit or to kneel, our prayers are going to be led by Julian, Seb, Lauren, Archie and Ariana. So if they would like to come forward. Now up you come. And if you want to go in a line that way, Julian, you're first. So in nice and close to the microphone. Dear God, thank you for a new year in school, and we pray that we may be able to be in school for the whole year. We pray too for all those who've been affected by the coronavirus. Thank you for all the new people who have started in the school. We pray that they will be very happy in Boucherstown National School and make lots of friends. Amen. Amen. Well done, Julian. Seb. To treat people well, dear God, help us always to treat everyone with kindness and respect. Help us to think before we speak or act so that we do not hurt others and treat them in the ways that we would like to be treated. Amen. Well done, sir. For willingness to learn, dear God, there is so much that we don't know and we've realized that we'll never know everything, but help us to be eager to learn. Help us to do our best and to be enthusiastic. This we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Well done. Now, Archie's next. Okay, in nice and close, Archie. Dear God, we thank you for everyone who is part of our school. The parents, the staff, the parents, oh, the pupils, the parent-teacher association, the board of management. We thank you for those who give their time voluntarily to the school and to school activities. Everyone is an important part of the school. Amen. Dear God, thank you. We, dear God, we thank you for all the facilities that we have in school, and we particularly thank you for the new and improved things over the last while, as the new roof, the trim trail, the iPads, and the forest school. We thank you for all those who worked hard to make these things happen. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Brilliant. Thank you very much, all of you. You can go back to your seats. Well done. And we think too this morning of those who are in particular need of our prayers. We think of those who don't have all the facilities or the opportunities to go to school like we do. And so we pray particularly for the girls and the women in Afghanistan who don't have access to education in the way that the men and the boys do or that we do. We think of those other places where they don't have the facilities that we have. And so we ask that when we are involved in things that are about caring for others and providing facilities for others, that we would be generous. We think too of those for whom today is a difficult day. Those who are ill with coronavirus, those who are ill with other illnesses. We think of those who have been serving our community so well in the last 18 months in our hospital and medical facilities. We ask God to give them the strength in their important work, which has been very tiring and exhausting over that time. And we think of those who are sad at this time. And we think particularly of the Burke family as they grieve for Sarah and Anna's granddad and John's dad. 
So Lord, and all who have a particular need, we bring them to you and ask that they would know your love and your care. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's gather together all our prayers in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, usually one of the things that the children love is being able to uh, work out who's going to get the baskets to take up the collection. But because of COVID, we can't do that. So there are baskets at the doors, should you wish to make uh, a donation this morning. Before we sing our next hymn, can I just uh, say to you that you're all warmly invited to tea, coffee or juice over in the parish centre through the yellow doors on that side of the church and the hall. It's nice and big, so there'll be plenty of space and we also have the doors open so there's lots of fresh air in there as well. This day, two weeks, we're going to have our harvest Thanksgiving. And at that, the church will be beautifully decorated for the harvest with flowers and fruit and vegetables and all sorts of things. Um, and we give thanks to God that we are so fortunate to have enough. What I'm asking is that the children of the parish and the children of the school would bring in non-perishable food items in the week leading up to that Sunday. So starting from Monday, the 4th of October. Uh, and what we do with those is we take them to the Capuchin Day Centre in Bow Street, which does so many meals every day um, and also makes up food parcels for families who would not get enough to eat except for the work of the, the, Bo, uh, the Capuchin Centre in Bow Street. So uh, I'd really like you to be able to help us with that. And then the other thing is that these kind of little um, packets of, of kind of curry that you add hot water to. Now, for those who are homeless, these are really handy because people that will always give them hot water. We also have an ongoing work with Trust, which works with the homeless in Dublin. So these are another item that if I could ask you if you were able to bring in, because we will be able to pass these on as well to the Alice Leahy Trust, who works with the homeless. So non-perishable food items, so please not things that will go off, um, that would be fantastic in that week starting the 4th of October uh, and on that Sunday, the 10th of October, uh, including these kind of things that we can pass on to Trust. I think this one is a chicken curry. Uh, anyway, it doesn't really matter what it is, the flavour. Uh, I'm sure there's a variety of, of um, taste that people have. So that would be really good. Thank you. Unfortunately, our autumn fair, which we've had every October except last year, is not going to happen either this year because of the coronavirus. And we've had, if you remember, the, the great PJ's Bake Off. Now, for those of you who are new, this is not about baking in your pyjamas. The PJ's refers to St. Philip and St. James. But we're going to have a smaller event later in the year in Christmas, and we hope in conjunction with that, that we will have a great PJ's Bake Off where the children get to, to enter a baking competition. And not only do they have to look good, they have to taste good as well. But I'll be telling you more about that. So now we're going to sing the hymn that we did as well. Um, because we did this on last Friday as well, Our God is a Great Big God. So we have actions for this as well. So, our God is a great big God. Okay, and I forgot the E-R in the higher, so he's higher than a skyscraper. So, will we do this one now? You remember it from Friday? Let's go, up you get.
Thanks, Charles. Well done. Please kneel or sit. Love that song. Normally we get the children to bring their school bags if they have them with them up to the front of the church at this point, but because of COVID we're not. So even if you have your school bags, just hang on to them where you are and we're going to bless everybody in the school and the school bags as well. Father of us all, bless all the pupils of Bhutistan National School and all other places of learning. May they be enthusiastic about learning, exploring, and discovering all sorts of things. Give them a sense of wonder, and may they use all and every opportunity to develop all their talents. Bless all the staff of Buddhistan National School and of all schools and colleges. Guide them in their work and inspire their creativity. Bless all parents and guardians, those in Buddhistan National School and beyond. May their homes be places of love, security, and truth. And may their children come to know of your love through their love for them. Bless those who serve in the Board of Management in Buddhistan National School and other schools and colleges. Give them wisdom in their decision making. Bless the school bags that are carried to and from school or college each day with all the things necessary for the day of learning. Bless all who are a part of the school May we all strive to be kind, caring, honest and fair, to be the best kind of people that you want us to be. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So the Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Our final hymn is kind of like our school anthem. Those of you who will be, have left sixth class who are here with your families will know that we've always had this at the graduation ceremony for sixth class when we've been able to have one. But it's not just about going happening when we leave school, it's asking about God to be with us all the way through school, even when we start in school. So for the start of the year, we're having 658, one more step along the world, I go. Mm -hmm. 